Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cropper here. About the tea parties. There are tea parties going on uh, quite often nowadays, I guess, a, a bit, a few of them. And they are anti-government rallies by, like, libertarians and this type. And Euron Brook spoke for a couple minutes at one. There was one up here in Boston, um, which is where the original Tea Party was, of course. Now, I wanted to talk for a minute about that. They had a Tea Party in Boston, so and then the revolution was on the um, coattails, so to speak. Well, we've got Tea Parties going here in America. Are we going to rebel, or are we still too free? And I had some thoughts about that. If you think that we might rebel against the government that we have today. We can th look at the fact we can go to the movies, we can move anywhere in the country we want to. We don't, there's no such thing as an internal passport system or anything like that. Um, the richest, wealthiest nation on the planet, uh, the best, w most well-fed, uh, one of the lowest tax rates on the planet, uh, especially among developed nations, etc., etc. So maybe we're too spoiled in a certain sense. Maybe we're too free. As I've heard it said of the Chinese system, um, there's not going to be a rebellion or anything against Chinese communism, Chinese market communism, because the government allows them enough freedom that you know, they can go to the movies and they can go to internet cafes and they can go bowling. Um, so is that how America is? Are we too comfortable? Are we too pampered and spoiled to rebel? Well, I think that it's interesting to note that we probably have less freedom than the Founding Fathers when they rebelled before America, before the Declaration of Independence. Go to 1775, and they probably had a freer society with fewer, less, smaller infringements on their rights than by and large we have today in America, especially if you consider our income tax, for example, and you consider the stifling of freedom of speech with political um, campaign laws, campaign finance laws, and limitations on advertisements for tobacco companies and cigarette companies and, and uh, alcohol retailers and so on. Limitations on freedom of speech that we just accept as necessary as part of the system. We've still got our Constitution. We've still got the First Amendment. It hasn't been amended past the First Amendment. The First Amendment hasn't been changed. Why are they limiting freedom of speech and campaign speeches and stuff? Why is the government paying for campaign speeches and, and then getting in and, and saying this is what you can and can't say? Why are advertisers under a muzzle? This is just one example. And then the uh, education system. Look at that. What would the uh, pe Excuse me? Excuse me. Lord. What would the Founding Fathers have thought of our education system and our subservience to this horrifically expensive uh, system that is not teaching our kids anything? By and large, I think if you look at it, the Founding Fathers, before they rebelled, were freer than we are today. So if they were to come up and see us today, they would look at all the things going on in society and say, you have you know, the right to rebel at any time. Now, the difference is, they were rebelling from a country across the seas. They were a colony. Today, it won't be a rebellion. It'll be a revolution within the country. But they would come and say, you have a right to throw off these chains. You have a right to fire five million government bureaucrats. You have a right to this. You should do it. And I think that we should. Or probably more like 15 million government bureaucrats should be fired. I mean, think of it. Everybody working anywhere in the IRS or for the uh, uh, welfare services and uh, any portions of the government health care systems, all government health care would go. You know, think of it. Fifteen million people all of a sudden unemployed. You have a right to do it, though. They do not have a right to glom on to you and live off of you as a parasite, as you, they, are the parasite, you know. So, if it was justified for the Founding Fathers back then to start a rebellion, then it's got to be much more justified now. So much for the idea that we're too free and too pampered for change. Some of us uh, are a bit antsy about it,
probably less antsy than we should be. The Founding Fathers, we should remember, had probably, I think, on the whole, more freedoms than we have today. So, what are you waiting for? Well, I'll tell you what we're waiting for. We're waiting for education. The Founding Fathers had a situation where the society in general wanted freedom, believed in freedom, accepted freedom as a way of life, thought that it was a good thing. But we don't have that situation today. So what are you waiting for? You're waiting for education. Don't go marching in the streets yet. Don't go uh, tar and feathering the governor. Um, because if we were to crash the system and start a new government in America, it would be an absolute disaster, the type of um, evil people that would crawl out from under rocks to try to gain power. And what type of system do you think they would try to put in? We'd probably end up with full-fledged communism. Um, 100 percent paid for government housing and health care, probably. I'll, I bet that's what people would come up with. Can you imagine a constitutional convention today? So, we're justified insofar as our liberty has been trampled on further than the Founding Fathers. But we're not justified insofar as we don't have a culture to actually implement the politics in. So, the Libertarians are a bit early. They're right. They're right. Everything's very screwed up. But they're wrong about whether or not it's time to dive in and just ask for people's vote. Who are we asking to vote for us? All the morons who don't even know anything about anything? People who don't know that the world existed before Jesus was born? That's what I've heard from a middle-aged woman. Wasn't the year zero when God created the world, when Jesus was born? Jesus was born, God created the world. I mean, they don't even know their Bible, some people. Are these the people who are trying to get to vote in a government of freedom? Right? So problem number one is education. Uh, oh, I slip on a little commercial at the end here. So please uh, support me in my effort to bring good education to the world. And uh, don't send a political contribution to the Libertarian Party. Send it to me or go buy some uh, CDs from Lisa Van Dam uh, and her school in Irvine, California. That's some good material there. Uh, but either way, let's not get ready for a revolution too soon. We've got to get this education problem licked so that the people know that they are, in a certain sense, enslaved.